I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have. Whilst you are holding the hands of your neighbor left and right, I want you to pray a very simple, sincere prayer from the depth of your heart. You're going to say, Lord, cause my neighbor to become an overcomer, that they do not ignore this lesson that has come from the pain of overcomers. Go ahead. That is your only prayer for tonight. Pray for your neighbor. He's taking the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable. There's no need to cry because you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Oh, man, my. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. Father, cause my brother, my sister, cause my neighbor to learn this profound destiny altering lessons from the overcomer. From Abraham, the overcomer, Paul, the overcomer, Jesus, the greatest of all overcomers. From our fathers who have become overcomers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. For many of you who have been wounded in life and destiny, you have felt like you have failed and failed and failed and failed and failed. I'm speaking by the Spirit of the living God that every negative voice that has spoken to you that you will never emerge, you will never become, may that voice be silenced now. For those of you who have made all kinds of mistakes around your life and destiny and you are wondering whether it's worth continuing the journey, I bring you glad tidings. There is hope for a tree. Even if it be caught up at the scent of water, receive grace to keep going. Receive grace to keep going. Receive grace to keep going. Grace to keep going. I pray for you. For everyone who has ignored hitherto any of these eight lessons that we have today learned from the overcomer i pray for grace that you will retrace your steps grace to take the wisdom of the overcomer seriously in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you that every power that wants to fight your becoming an overcomer in experience becoming an inspiration to all around you and to younger generations, I'm praying that that power is cleared out of the way. I call you by faith and by grace an overcomer. Your life will become an inspiration to many people. Your life will become a motivation to many people. 
in the name of Jesus Christ that from today people will look at your life and the energy to continue will be imparted upon them in the name of Jesus Christ reflection of their spiritual understanding which is a reflection of what the secret place has done in their lives or otherwise tonight household of David we are at the threshing floor of Nabal and what God is going to do is that he will grant us grace we are going to cry and say Lord I'm not afraid of the fire let that sacrifice whatever it will take Lord I listen listen sit down first I'm establishing a prayer request Lord, I used to love you. I don't know what happened to me. I'm surprised to see that my Bible is now a nuisance. I'm surprised to see that my prayer life, when I was in the university, I was a prayer secretary. Lord, I don't know what is becoming of my life now. You need to help me. You see, let me tell you, when you are broken and contrite, you attract His presence. When you stand here feeling I am okay, retreats are not for sinners. They are for men who want more. There are times that you say, Lord, I thank you, but I'm easily discouraged. The spirit of faith is not yet at work in me. Lord, grace. Every time I pray and I ask you to give me something, every time pastor declares over my life, once I wait three, four days, no results, I'm discouraged. It means there is something I need to get. Hallelujah. There are many of you right now. You are about to make very costly decisions. Because what God told you, it looks like time is going. Please, Saul, we can't wait for Samuel. Why should we wait? What is special about Samuel? Bring me the objects of sacrifice. And you are about to lose the throne of your life. And God sent this retreat to say, stop before you ruin your destiny return back to the secret place show me a man that has missed it no matter how far and can find his way to the secret place i show you a man who will shoot out like a plant out of the earth again retreats are mysteries that create stability and sustainability in our christian experience notice a man that is a man of the secret place you will not see a challenge for too long in his life. You will see pride. You are noticing it grow. And then later you will see him for one week. He comes out and everything is gone. The refiner's fire. The refiner's fire. Fire is not just for deliverance alone. Fire is for refining. Refining. Lord help me. I'm a man of God. But in the last one month, my appetite for women, I need help fast. Don't sit down and say I'm alright until you die and the devil destroys you ha, this sister came for prayers and I'm, immediately i'm praying my mind is going somewhere lord i need help and god says you're welcome come there is a place where men find refuge it's better to be open in the secret place than to be disgraced openly by the devil whatever you tolerate for long in your life will be what will destroy you i'm a man of god but i slapped my wife Sorry is not the answer. Go to the secret place. That I could slap her means I can stab her tomorrow if God does not help me. I slapped my husband and I said, I'm human. You see, that means that humanity can, you can carry a knife and tear your husband into two and say, sorry, I'm human. We live in a world where we celebrate our humanity. People do foolish things and say we're human. It's true we're human, but what then is the advantage of the secret place? What then is the advantage of the presence of God? Please, let's love God, but let's not let westernization fool us. We do every kind of nonsense and say we are humans. I insult you. I say I will, I'm, I'm human. At the time I was insulting you, I was depressed. There are many worries in life. Is the worry unique to you? It is your spirituality that will help you. Otherwise, we'll make a mess of our destinies in the name of humanity. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Yes, sir. There are some of you retreats at times when God tells you you are running too fast. Did you hear what I'm saying? You are running too fast. There can be a man of God. You want this conference today. Tomorrow you want this. You want to build 10 branches. Then at the same time you want to start TV ministry. Then at the same time and during the retreat, God will say, out of the 10 points, only two are my will now. And he said, Lord, I thought we just danced that day. We thought we had you. Say, that's why you needed a retreat because that was not me 
and you just cut. My people know my, my leader. Sometimes we discuss a lot of things, very ambitious things we want to do. And then when they hear me quiet about it, they don't ask me again, sir, what of that? They already know what happened. Ah, we are going to do this. And then later they see me just come out and say, what were we discussing before? Let's, and I keep that thing quietly. They just know that uh, God has not spoken. I never do anything in my life until God speaks. I've seen the wastage and the vanity of moving when he's not leading you. The pain is that you must come back. God will not go and meet you there. He will wait and say, okay. Lord, where are you? Say, I'm here. Okay, so you come back. Listen, let me prove it to you. The first time God cut the rock for Moses. The second time he said, Moses, cut the rock and come and meet me where you met me there. Cut it by yourself with your hands. That memory will not allow you to crash it out of anger again. I did it free for you and you carried it and smashed it before you and then turned it into powder. But now you use your hand and cut it. I don't know if there's someone here that is tired of your flesh interrupting the grace and the glory of God. You are one leg in today, one leg out. I know you don't like the message, but this is the price for the glory. The same way a doctor gives you a tablet, you say, doctor is bitter. I say, are you ready to be, to be fine? He say, yes, man. He say, swallow it. Swallow it quietly. And you do it religiously for four or five days. And you see that there's improvement. Tomorrow, when you stand in the television and people are watching you and saying, BC, this lady has risen this far. You would turn and say, household of David, thank you. Because it was in that meeting God taught me that pain is not demonic. It was in that meeting I learned you will never rise to a position of greatness with flesh being alive. Listen, you don't have to be a sinner for flesh to be there. You must crush it and trust God. Once you pamper the flesh, it will destroy you. I say it again. Once you pamper the flesh, man of God, once you pamper the flesh, it will tear you into pieces. You need to come before God. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Lord, I come before you. Help me. I'm in household of David. I'm anointed is true, but Lord, I need help fast. This is my appetite for money. I'm anointed, but I can still leave me be. Once my account is 500,000, I'm already fidgeting. Once my account is 50,000, I can lie. I can change my message to raise money. It's a weakness. It can be nailed tonight so that you will come out refined as gold. Listen. Tonight I want you to open up your tendencies and vulnerabilities before God and cry and say, Lord, please work on it now so that it does not destroy me when a nation is looking up to me. It is not when a generation now looks at you. You represent an inspiration. This is my prayer many times when I'm in the secret place. I say, Lord, please, if there is anything in my life, work on it. I represent too much to a generation. There are too many people who are waiting on my work with God to, to, to ginger them. What happens if all of these people just hear something tomorrow and they say, this person that has inspired, yes, they will still love you. But you have corrupted a track record. Someone looks, God uses your face to encourage someone to continue rising spiritually. There is a price. Don't ever pamper the flesh. I'm not condemning you. Kill it right from the inception when that seed is sown. Lust, pride, immorality. Name it. You don't like my, the message I'm preaching this night? Please like it. Please like it. In the name of Jesus, like it. This is the secret to power and influence and grace more than you can imagine. Where your voice becomes like fire. It looks like God owes you his presence. You make one utterance and shift lives. It's not magic. It's not a gift. It's a track record. Hallelujah. We are going to pray tonight. There's a lot to pray about. There's a lot to pray. If you don't have a prayer point from everything I've said, you need to be born again. There is a serious there is a call to a cry. 
when we cry don't just wait for any usher to touch you because the ushers too are going to be crying and praying for their own lives are we together in a few minutes i'm going to be challenging us the instrumentalists to just just soak in the atmosphere just give us whatever it is and everybody here is going to find a place whether you are inside or outside we are going to say lord i come to you i've been waiting for a man to drum this truth I've known in my spirit that there is something wrong, but thank God I've been waiting for a moment where someone will nail it on point. Thank you, Lord, for anointing Pastor Shola to organize this meeting. It's called a total experience. We have other dimensions we are going to talk about, but this is the foundation. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to hear me. I speak to you this way because I love you. There is no other way to be great in the kingdom. There is no shortcut. Are we together? In the next 10 minutes, praise the Lord. I know that those outside, there may not be a point of convenience. Even if you have to stand, you have to find a corner somewhere. Those inside here, you are just going to find a convenient corner while the worship team, I mean the, the instrumentalists, just, just flow, you are going to cry before God. Please, lay your golden crown. I'm a man of God. Congratulations. But we are going to cry. I will join you, all of us together. We are going to cry before God and say, Lord, I can't lie again. I, you have to win this war tonight. You have to win this war tonight. Go ahead, find somewhere. Pray. Your holy presence. Just pray. Forget about me. Living in me. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I. fire prune this habit in my life oh God I've been crying for 30 days I cry I cry Man. 
man of God, but I cry for help. I know that I'm a woman of God, but I cry for help. I know I'm a businessman. I've placed other things above you. The truth is I love money more than you. The truth is I love power more than you. The truth is I love titles more than you. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have. it die tonight i've been given an excuse that is my background that's how we are in our family but tonight oh god i release myself i give up the lust i give up the anger i give up the jealousy lord this is for real i'm not just being emotional i mean it i mean it i mean it Lord, what is it in my life that I cannot hand over to you? Tonight I hand over. Is it the car? Is it the house? Is it my reputation? Is it my salary? Lord, what have I exalted above you? Is it ministry? Is it anointing? Is it business? Is it fame? Is it my accomplishment? We're around 
you know. Just a few more minutes and we're done. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. that if there is anything in your life that is corrupting your Christian testimony, I stand for the God of heaven and I pray for you. This night, I separate you from it forever. Yeah. Pornography, masturbation, immorality, Pride, jealousy, flesh, in the name of Jesus, I separate you from it. I separate you from it. I separate you from it. Listen, if there is any appetite that is captured in your experience and is not of the Christ, you may have been tolerating it. You may not like it, but you have found out you are a slave to it. I stand before the God of heaven. And in the name that is above all names, let the fire from heaven that separates, separate you right now. Hear me? 
please just help them. I declare in the name that is above all names, whatever has taken the place of God in your life, it may be a good thing. It may even be something God gave you. But I'm stretching my hands now. That fire, as that fire comes upon you, tomorrow we'll have time to pray for the sick. But as that fire comes on you, it must find someone tonight. I declare, that fire reorders everything in your life and keeps God in His rightful position. Hear me? If there is anyone, especially you are part of this spiritual family, there is any association that you are part of that is strangling your Christian life. You love God, but your friends don't love God. And you, you come and receive prophecies here, but you go back and they rubbish your experience in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let there be a separation between you and those associations. Hallelujah. Listen. There are many of you, the grace to pray has gone. You are not bad. The grace just dried up. You cannot consciously, you don't love God enough to go for a retreat on your own. Church retreat, yes. Departmental retreat, yes. But, but that on your own, you say, I need God. I pray for you. Whatever must happen to you tonight, in the name of Jesus, the passion and it will infect you is like a cancer. I declare, may that hunger land upon your life now. The Holy Spirit used to wake you 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and you will pray, but something happened. And all of a sudden, his voice is not even clear. I decree and declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, I shift you back to that realm where you hear his voice. Listen, there are many of us, I'm praying, because your vulnerabilities are too much. We have to pray. Some of you are unusually emotional. It's not just biological. It's demonic. Listen, I want to pray for you. It's demonic. The devil plays it. Anything just goes. The self-restraint, the capacity to say no is not there. Anything can happen. Let me just preach my old school message tonight. That good old message that will pull everything until you carry the glory. That excessive emotional, you just say, oh, I think it's just, it's just me, it's just hormonal. It's just, no, no. If you allow your emotions, they will tear you into pieces and ruin your Christian experience. The world that is looking at you and looking up to you will not hear the fact that you were emotional. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the grace, the stability of mind, of spirit, of emotions that will help you preserve the testimony of God. your life. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. 
especially my adorable sisters dear sisters hear me that you are a woman does not mean that your emotions just go haywire and let the devil destroy you i declare the stability of deborah let it come upon you in the name of jesus christ let me give you a little assignment where you are back tomorrow i know that many the impartation and please don't miss tomorrow's meeting even if you are not a member of household of david uh, just make that sacrifice for tomorrow it's my last session it will be a waste to do an impartation and to pray and do all of these things this is what you need the assignment i'm giving you is please take at least 15 minutes when you go back home any 15 minutes before morning just take some time alone with god even if you are married just please for some 15 minutes and stay and trust god list out the things that must get out of your life and pray for that 15 minutes hold it as a request lord this must leave lord this must leave because the fire that is coming upon you is a fire that your generation will celebrate you for your wealth is in that fire your greatness is in that fire your glory is in that fire there is a prophetic word for this church but i will say it tomorrow there is something god has told me about house of david household of david but tomorrow i will say it i want to say it in the open and i want to say it on air a shifting i'm telling you is coming to this church it's true it will be so strange i'm not i don't want to give you the details but it will surprise you In the name of Jesus Christ. The gentleman on white, my friend, lift your hands. I'm seeing an angel pouring something like oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, whatever that is to do in your life, I declare let it be done now. I'm not ministering this night, but the gentleman holding a red phone, the Lord is saying I should tell you that you are going through a season of pruning with him. That but after that pruning, your glory will shine. God bless you for staying tuned through us till this time. Welcome to Reflector Hub TV. On this platform, we believe the word of the Lord comes with accuracy to your life. And also that you see evidences, proofs, results of your efforts, your conscious and intentional growth. Your investment towards ensuring that you are spiritually built up into the fullness of the measure of the stature of God. And don't forget that you're always welcome to Reflector Hub TV, where we bring you prayers, we bring you God's word from His servant, or through His servant, rather, Apostle Joshua Selman. And don't forget to subscribe if you're a new um, viewer, and don't also forget to click the notification bell so as to stay in touch with our every uploads god bless you